start with paper number two, topic one, heredity and evolution. But before we start our actual topic, we are going to learn certain concepts like DNA, RNA and proteins. So once you understand what is the exact location of DNA RNA inside the cell, what is the structure, what are the functions of this DNA and RNA, after that there will be no difficulty by learning the topic. And whenever it is necessary, you can pause or you can replay the video. You can see the video on the video. You can see the video on the video. So, let us start with our first molecule, DNA. DNA is a type of 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 DNA. Now, what is the exact location of this DNA? So, to understand it, let us take a look at the cell. So, in front of you, there is an animal cell. And inside that animal cell, you can clearly observe nucleus. Now, let us take a more closer look to nucleus. So, here comes nucleus. And inside nucleus, you can see there is a network of fibers. This network of fibers is called as chromatin fiber. Generally, chromatin fibers are not visible in ordinary cells. But when that cell is ready for cell division, at that time, this chromatin fiber, they start coming together, which is called as condensation of chromatin fiber. And by condensation of chromatin fiber, they form thicker structure. These thick structures are called as chromosomes. So, in third image, you can see a nucleus is shown marked by red circle. At this side, there nucleus, various chromosomes are present. Number of chromosomes is different for different organisms. But particularly, you will think there are 46 chromosomes in the form of 23 pairs. And all these 23 pairs are shown in the diagram. This is how exactly a single chromosome looks. Now let's switch the diagram and let us go to a second diagram. In the diagram that is displayed in front of you. On the top of the diagram, you can see a single chromosome is present. Now you have to imagine a condition that you are holding any one arm of that chromosome. And you are pulling that chromosome so that that chromosome is separated into a thread. In simple way, we can say that we are unwinding that chromosome. So, when that chromosome will start unwinding, as per diagram, as you can see in that diagram, that chromosome is separated into two components. Out of that one component will be the DNA itself, and second component will be a protein molecule. That protein molecule is called as histone. Actually, this DNA molecule it is coiled by this histone molecule. We are going to learn about DNA. As you can see in the image, in DNA there are two strands and each strand is made up of a small unit. That small unit is called as nucleotide. So, this is how a single nucleotide works. Each nucleotide is again made up of three different components. First component is shown by a pentagon, which is called as pentoshoot. Second component is shown by a circle, that is called as phosphate. And third component is shown by square. It is called as nitrogen bases. But its nitrogen bases are again of four different types. So first is adenine, second guanine, third cystosine, and last is thymine. So any one of these four nitrogen bases, one pentosugar and one phosphate molecule, they combine with each other and make a single nucleotide. Now, I will tell simultaneously such many nucleotides combine with each other one with another to make one strand of DNA. Similarly, another strand of DNA it will be also made up of a series of nucleotides, just by showing the figure. But here we have to remember one more thing. In case of these two strands in the dialogue, nitrogen bases are always facing each other. But what you have to remember, if adenine is the nitrogen base on one strand, it will be always connected to thymine on another strand. That means adenine is complementary to thymine and guanine is complementary to cytosine. This is called as a complementary connection. You can see the same complementary connection in the diagram also. This is final DNA molecule. Now, one more thing is in Now, you have to imagine that this DNA molecule, which is looking like a ligand, you are holding the DNA molecule on upper side and lower side. And imagine if you are moving the upper side or you are twisting this upper side in anti-clockwise direction and you have to twist lower side into clockwise direction. So when you twist upper and lower side in opposite direction, you will get arrangement which will look something like this. In which there are two strands, but these two strands are twisted around each other. That means this is Alex number one and it's Alex number two, which is shown in the final diagram. As two helix are present in this DNA, it is called as double helical structure of DNA and 
this model of DNA was discovered by two scientists, Watson and Crick. So this model of DNA, or that model of DNA, it is called as double helical structure of DNA, or Watson and Crick model of DNA. For the DNA, we are going to learn, we are going to start with our second molecule, RNA, ribonucleic acid. First, let us try to find out what are the similarities between DNA and RNA. Just like DNA, RNA is also made up of strand. But in DNA, there are two strands, while in RNA, a single strand is present. This single strand is also made up of nucleotide, just like DNA. And this strand is again also made up of three components. First component, phosphate. Second component, pentose sugar. And third are the nitrogen bases. But here comes the key difference. What is the difference or what is the exact difference between DNA and RNA? In DNA, four nitrogen bases are present. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. In RNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine. These three nitrogen bases are common with DNA. But the last nitrogen base in DNA, that is thymine. In RNA, this thymine is not present, but instead of thymine, uracil is present. So, all these components come together, they make a single nucleotide, and these nucleotides are connected to form a single strand of RNA. But, RNAs are again of three different types, depending upon their function and depending upon their location. So, our first type of RNA is on screen. That RNA is called as messenger RNA. Now, why it is called as messenger RNA? So, this messenger RNA reads the message on the DNA that is present in the nucleus of the cell. And by reading that message, it forms a message. That message is called as messenger RNA. Now, this messenger RNA is transferred to ribosomes, which will actually perform the process of protein synthesis. Now, our second RNA is transfer RNA. Now, all our proteins are made up of amino acids. So, for formation of protein, for synthesis of protein, amino acids are necessary. And these amino acids are supplied with them for this transfer RNA. So, as per the message on mRNA, this transfer RNA, it will supply amino acids. And our final RNA, it is ribosomal RNA. So, here is the ribosomal RNA. This ribosomal RNA is a part of ribosome that are attached on endoplasmic reticle. The amino acids that are supplied by tRNA will be taken to ribosomal RNA. And finally, this ribosomal RNA will connect all of this amino acid and it will make the final protein. So, these are the three types of RNA that are too much necessary to understand the process of protein synthesis that we have to start in our